himself in those nonsense. Uh, while the world calls it sin, where you're going to hell if you violate God's statutes or ordinances. How I many you know that there's something that happened at the cross that got rid of that that fear of eternal death? I mean, because we don't have it anymore. We've been given eternal life. Amen. If you study the scriptures correctly, you've been afforded the luxury of never having to even think about hell. But it's a scare tactic that a lot of religious people like to use because they like to keep you scared and in the seats and your wallet wide open. Trust me, I know, I was there. And, you know, they used to use people to come in sometimes and do all the pastor's dirt work and talk to us like we were the most rotten scoundrels in the world. And in the end, take all the offering and then the pastor would give him half just because he was able to say the things the pastor was tired of saying. That's just the way it goes, you know, that's kind of shady tactics, but it happens, amen. So I'm not here to be a policeman for the body of Christ, but I am here to advise you on accuracy. So we want you to be... You know, accurate. Now, if you ever travel out of Hilo and go attend some of your family members' churches, or even in Hilo, if you're brave enough to walk into another church just to hear, I'll tell you, you hear some stuff. Man. You hear some stuff. Ah, you know what? I, because we record everything, we don't edit anything. I, if you notice, I'm not careful about what I say. I just say it because that's the truth. I'm accountable for what I teach. These guys will be accountable for what they teach. Now, I'm not saying that we're all going to get to heaven and God's going to start smashing people's faces. And I'm just saying that you know, there's going to be big segments of people that aren't going to be too pleased when you got those. The, in the Old Testament, it says that you know you, you wear either a robe of righteousness or a gown of salvation. Now, everybody gets saved, right? You want to wear the white gown with the white robe thing tied on your way. But you want to wear a robe of righteousness. Yes, yes. You know? uh, according to the Bible, it says that the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. That's Old Testament. What happens is when you get to heaven, if you're not well educated or well versed, I mean, you know that there's going to be classes. I don't think you want to keep going to classes for eternity. If you get this right quickly, I mean, you will enter into the holy city and straight to the throne of God where you always were anyway. And that's what churches are supposed to teach, that you are seated where? Heavenly See, places. I always go back to that because we are seated in heavenly places yeah. in Christ Jesus. Here's one good piece of advice for all of you. Start acting like you're a child of royalty. Stop being a big fat crybaby. Amen. Sure Amen. Amen. Because everything is under control. There's nothing God's throwing out there to chance and hoping you stumble. That's not how he operates. You see, there's other preachers that will tell you that, well, if you do this, you will get that. If you do this, you will get that. How many know that? That's obvious. Amen, right? If I go run in the traffic right now, I'm leaving that to chance. I cannot say if I get run over, it was the devil. And if I don't, it was God. Amen. That's just not how it works. You know, you know the job is dangerous before you even chance it, right? Amen. You guys remember Super Chicken, the cartoon? <laughs> you know, some of the old timers know. Super Chicken is a model of, you knew the job was dangerous before you took it. Yeah. Well, you knew it was going to be a prospect of, and, <laughs> that yeah. you know the devil hates you, right? But he's powerless to do anything unless you let him do it through yourself. That's right. It's yeah. a tricky prospect because everything is under control based on your sanity. Everybody yeah. say sanity. sanity. Because the definition of insanity is you doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. It doesn't happen that way. Hallelujah. Yeah. Unless you have mental illness and multiple personality disorder. <laughs> then you don't know what will happen. Yeah. You know what? All right. So we're all cool. Amen. Amen. You guys' axis is tilted in the right way, right? You're not bipolar. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So I made this nice little poster for you. So. Sometimes when you invite me to your house, I see them in your bathroom next to the toilet. Sometimes I see them in your ice box. Sometimes I find them right in the seat where you're sitting, so you're not yeah. too sly. Yeah. Yeah. But we're going to talk about the effects of self-induced nonsense. And these are pretty obvious, but you, know, you got to go to the Bible. There's a mix here of Old and New Testament, so you can kind of see where things are, where, they, where they've migrated to. Because I want you to leave here well informed. I don't like our people, you know, especially if you trust me as your pastor and spiritual father. I want you to really trust what I'm teaching you because you will hear all manner of evil wickedness, yeah. silliness, yeah. folly, fantasy, weird pie in the sky stuff. How many of you like realities? 
You know, here's what it is, right? Present day truth is what our message is. You guys know what present day truth is? It's the today, here and now. It's not yesterday, it's not tomorrow, it's today. Present day truth means we bask in the glory of what Jesus did for us. 2,000 years ago is the same because the Bible says, right, in Hebrews, yes. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? So forever is your tomorrow. So everything's taken care of. And Jesus said in Matthew 6, don't worry about tomorrow, worry about today. And he didn't say worry today. He said you should be taking care of business today. Just know who you are in Christ Jesus today. And where are you seated today? Yeah. Obviously seated in, seated in church. Right now, across the yeah. um, But spiritually speaking, you seated in a high place. And the enemy cannot get to you. Amen. Only other thing you can do if you're seated in heavenly places, you're sitting on the throne upside down. And your head is beneath the cloud line. <laughs> and the enemy can whisper in the, the Grand Canyon between your ears. All right, so we're looking at some scripture here today. And I... Again, I want you to be well informed. The effects of self induced nonsense is not bad, amen. Because let's put it this way I've said this before energy can't be dissipated. So you know that the power of God exists in full power, it never is dissipated or diluted or watered down at all, but it can be moved off the mark, amen. So, in anything, you know, if you look at sports, if you're even an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch off somewhere along the line. In basketball, baseball, bowling, tennis, whatever. You just throw everything, all of your energies in one one way, but if you're off, even one little centimeter, it's way off at the end. And that's all the enemy's tactics are designed to do is get you to miss the mark. That's right. And the Bible says that all have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us. So we need something that doesn't make us fall short. You may, we need something that makes us hit the mark. Amen. The only thing I know is Ephesians 2 6. You're seated in heavenly places. That was the bullseye all along to put you in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that's it. If you move off the mark anywhere along the line, then that's on you. It's not on right. God and it's not on the devil. It's you. Amen. So let's look at Acts 28. Okay? So we're looking at verse 26 first, right? So let's see. Uh, this is Isaiah prophet. This is the Old Testament scripture, right? It says he's saying, Go to this people and say, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand. Now, Isaiah lived a long time before Jesus, and he prophesied that this is what was going to happen with God's people. So much so that Paul is writing this years and years later and referring back to the scripture, and he's talking to them, and this is what they talked about back then about you now. I know, you know, there's still people like this right now and today. Hearing you here and shall not understand. How I many you know that there's a lot of Christians out here hearing a lot of stuff, but they don't have, they lack understanding. Uh, I don't know, I like common sense things, amen? Two plus two equals four, amen? But if you start throwing... Alphabet. Alphabet. Right, you start confusing yourself, right? Hearing you here and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. So, amen? People hear and see the word on a daily yes. basis. Yeah. Yeah, I know some well-intentioned people that wake up early in the morning to do devotions, but they're reading this thing, and if their mind isn't, if you are not looking at the word from a proper vantage point, you will miss the mark completely. Yeah. You start looking at God as yet yeah, you see the next to God, but He's waiting to ready to slap your face no. or knock you off the throne because no. you're not worthy. You're not worthy. And see, you will see and not perceive, for the hearts of these people have grown dull. <laughs> and that's kind of what happened to the church now. There's a lot of dullness in the church. People try to hype up. One statement I heard today is that heaven invaded earth. Okay, I've been hearing that a lot. That's just an Old Testament term for saying that heaven has visited earth. I got news for you. Jesus is our Father prayer that was fulfilled already. He said, on earth as it is in heaven. So heaven, technically, boys and girls, cannot invade earth. It's only here. Yeah. In the form of his people. Yeah, we are. But you see, less informed people who want to try and hype up some kind of an anointing and make it exciting for others to look at them as, we are holy, we got it right. All the while, they got it wrong. <laughs> because it was already there. The thing they're saying visited was already there. It's just they finally opened their eyes and felt something. Amen. If you're looking for God to touch you with an electrical current or a lightning God, bolt, I got news for you. You have better luck jumping a fence and help go climbing a pole and grabbing a wire. Okay. 
Because these people, they're looking for excitement, not realizing it's already been there the whole time. You ever, how many of you ever been to church before? And they try to work themselves up into some kind of a frenzy. Worship. <laughs> and then in the end, they're like, ah. <laughs> they work themselves up so much during the worship that when it's time for the message, they don't fall asleep. Yeah. They got to constantly say amen to stay awake. That's the only reason you hear a lot of amens in church because they're trying to keep, keep themselves awake. That's, right. That's why we get free coffee. Because most of you are dead eggs anyway when it's come time to work in this city. You know, most churches are jumping, clapping, yeah. praising the Lord. Most of you are sitting in like, well, this is not. Yeah. The worship people, they're not looking for attention. They're looking to get you to pay attention to God. I don't know about you. Sometimes I come up and I lose myself in a worship. And I remind myself, well, okay, hey, bro, you don't mess with the preacher after this. So, wake up. You gotta get this going. Because I you know, I used to love worship before. I used to sit right in front of the speaker and not even worry about the, the worship just penetrate me. And that's what I like. I like lifting my hands and praising the Lord. And I like praising God. And I like praying in tongues and singing in tongues. While yeah. the worship is going in English, I'm singing in the Holy Ghost the same melody because some of you ask, many of you let not some of you many of you ask me oh, so what is the secret to getting all these miracles it's worship worship it's worship you gotta worship the Lord not just during music you gotta Every worship time. in everything you everything. do in everything, everything. Yeah. when I'm praying for people I was praying for some people today and you know the thing is I worship the Lord in my car on the way to them yeah. not with Christian radio no, I don't Christian. need that kind of music yeah. I can listen to ACDC running with the devil no, and I'm still worshiping the Lord. Because right. if I am running with the devil, I'm kicking right. him on the, in the leg, trying to trip him up anyway. Because right. I don't, I, you know, a lot of Christians say, watch what you listen to. Watch who you hang on with. You, that's obvious, Captain. Obvious, yeah. Yeah. So if I'm going to well, hang out with people, I got to understand that they may be looking to take me out. That's true. You know? But I'm wiser than them. You know why? I'm more evil than they ever could be. <laughs> you guys know I grew up evil. Yeah, yeah. So does that make them more cunning than me? No. Yeah. This is me allowing them to hang out with me. There you go. That's how Jesus was. You think Jesus was worried? You know all these things people, Christians say right now? Oh, you got to watch what you can hang out with because you don't know. Well, Jesus hung out with the hookers. There you go. He hung out with the tax collectors who were the most yeah. evil, wild people yeah. on the earth. Yeah. He hung out with murderers. Yeah. Of thieves, you know, man, Jesus' treasure was the biggest ripper offer of all time. Right? People say, Oh, you gotta watch them. We Judas was the worst treasure of all time because almost everything went in his pocket. That's right. And then it still wasn't enough because he sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. Just for 30. Yeah. And Jesus, you don't think Jesus knew? He knew. Well, Jesus is like, Yeah, you know why? Because his provision is not from earth. Some of you are worried about things. Oh, I gotta walk. What are you worried for? God is your provider, not these Amen. people. You can yeah. give everything away right now, and God will just find a way to get it back get to it you. Hundredfold. Even more. Amen. And that's kind of the way God wants you to operate. Don't worry about it. I'm not saying operate by reckless abandon. You know what I mean? Just be calculated, be smart. You know what right. you give is what you get. Amen. Right. If you loan something out, consider it a gift, yeah. not a loan. Yeah. Because when you consider it a gift, God can now bless that and bring it back to you. You know, I've seen people sold their way into perfect health from stage 4 cancer. Yeah, that's true. I've seen that turn around so many times. And I don't tell them to give. I just tell them, you know, God is, God would love to give you. But you got to match God on a level of giving that gets his attention. Yeah. And so many people do that. Boom. They bless with divine health and healing. They never have to worry. I've seen, I've seen a guy with two tumors blocking his alveoli in his lung tissue. So big, like softballs. I saw the thing disappear in one day because he gave God a gift. And it wasn't even to me. He gave it to another preacher. That's God. You know, because here's the thing. Some people say, oh, they got to give you. No, 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 no. Oh. They got to give God. Wherever God tells you to give, that's what you give. Amen. And was it me? Was I disappointed? Of course. <laughs> because it was a like half a million dollars he gave. Woo. But here's the thing. If I said, oh, wow, what about me? 
How you know that God will still use my gift? Because that gift is worth more than half of it. That's oh. right. Just plug in. Mm -hmm. plug in. Many of you in this room right now, I got news for you. Stop playing games with symptoms. Amen. Stop saying, oh, oh. <laughs> what is that? What is that? What you feel? Huh? What you feel? <laughs> All you gotta do is walk my face in. No, I feel and I sense the symptom. I'm just gonna try and push them back. Yes, amen. And I'm here for you, right? I pray for all of you. Ah. So I'm here to reinforce that. Amen. And it's my pleasure. Don't say, oh, but you said, so I'm bothering you. I don't... <laughs> if you're not going to Big Mac, where are you going? Big Mac. Big Mac. Okay, so you know where the gift is, right? On the Big Mac. <laughs> so you know where to get it. So you're not going to go down to KJ and say, I'm not going to Big Mac. <laughs> They're going to look at you like yeah. you're not. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you. Yeah. 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 All right. Their ears are hard of hearing. You know what ears is talking about, right? This is the Old Testament versus the New Testament. The ears of their heart are going to be hard of hearing. Yes, stop it. You know that the number one thing that people come to me for is, Pastor, what is God saying? <laughs> and this is what I'm thinking. <laughs> Bro, you don't hear for yourself. God sounds like you. Yeah. You asking me to interpret? I can, but how do you know that we all got to hold the gift of hearing God's voice? All of you hear God's voice. You know how I know? And I said this uh, in Bilico or Sunday. Here's how you know God's voice. When somebody's coming on and, and after they entertain your life and start participating in your life and then they burn you, you always say this, oh, I knew it was going to burn me. Oh, you heard God early, but you never listened. <laughs> I mean, if you have said that before, yeah. oh, you see, I knew it was up to no good. But you still went on me. <laughs> if you knew, you knew. If you never know, you're just acting like you knew, and you never know nothing till you know. Yeah, okay. And their eyes are closed. Yeah. Yeah, Amen. Well, that means when there's an opportunity, yes. I'm, I'm going to pass you by. Yeah. For something who's not, since all of these things happen to you, you can't hear, you can't see, your heart is dull, your ears are hard of hearing, your eyes are closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should okay. understand with their hearts and turn so that I. Should heal them. Yeah. Therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles and they will hear it. Amen. You know what that means? The Jewish people have a hard time. I mean, you know, there's a lot of Gentiles that act like Jews and they don't get it. Yeah, that's true. They don't get it. You know, stop acting like you're Jewish. That's right. You know how you act like you're Jewish when you think the law was written for you? Amen. You guys know not even the Ten Commandments is for you, right? No, it's only it's for the Jewish. Jewish people. How many Jewish people are in here right now? All right, tell your friends. Pack up and get out of my life. <laughs> says a lot of stuff, but tell them beat it. Amen. <laughs> tell them get out. You know why? If they come to you with that Old Testament law and say that you're a sinner, oh, you know, it wasn't even written for you anyway. That's right. For them to even say that is stupid. That stupid. And self-induced nonsense, on the other hand, is you knowing that God is a blessing God and you choose not to be blessed. We'll walk in your blessing. So you can see on your notes what we wrote here. Hearing and understanding is the most important thing. You can write down some other things. Seeing all of these. All of these things have to do with opportunity. Yes. You understand opportunity? Yes. Opportunity is a funny thing because when we miss it, we get upset. That's yes, right. But remember something. For everything that passes you by, it had to stop at your door first. Amen. Amen. You can say that. Oh, if I could go back, I would do this different. That means an opportunity came your way, good or bad, and you took it. Now, many of you in here are suffering from rejection and jealousy issues because we all do two original things that happened in heaven and in the garden. Amen. These things kind of follow us in life. So a lot of us, we cannot stand certain people. But here's the thing. There was an opportunity. To either have them in your life or not have them in your life. Yeah. Like, how about a good deal? Yeah. If I say, how many of you had a good deal pass you by? Yeah. yeah? That means you had to stop at your door for a moment. See, so have you been lacking opportunities? No. You know what you're lacking, right? Thoughts. Yeah. Courage. Courage. Some of you <laughs> get more gods than brains, they say. Right? 
So you chance things that you shouldn't, and then you gotta pay a consequence later. That's true. Amen. That's self-induced nonsense. Amen. But here's the thing: stop licking your wounds and crying about it. Just move on. Okay. If you give me a person to say, "Ha ha, oh boy, screw that one." Better learn. <laughs> no. Oh, you know the devil. Oh, blah, blah. I mean, as long as you blame the devil, he's got you turned around in the wrong direction anyway. That's right. And that's where most people are. They're so busy blaming Maybe. somebody else or blaming Maybe. the devil yeah. that they forget that, yeah, that was just a life lesson. Yeah. Amen. Learn it. Some of you girls make the same mistake over and over. You pick the wrong guy. <laughs> Why? Because well, it's not because you're bad. It's because you've been conditioned to through tradition guy. to pick the same the kind same of person. Guy. Most of those guys mimic your screwed up father. There's characteristics in your earthly father that sometimes you you don't like, but you end up picking the same thing. If you pick opposite, yeah. if you have the characteristics of your father and you pick opposite and you deal with it like you, you're still wrong. That's right. You gotta be Christ-like in all things, amen. amen. How do you be Christ-like? Hmm? Keep your eyes open, your ears open, and your mouth shut. That's the hardest part as a Christian, is keeping your mouth shut. Because I know I'm in a room full of politicians in there right now, ready to debate everything. That's all politicians are good for, arguing about nothing. Amen. Why do a lot of people hate Obama? Because he got things done. Amen. Uh, that's all I can say. He got things done and people hated him for it. Amen. You guys remember how many people lost houses back in the day? Yeah. Nobody had this, nobody had that. There's some accomplishment. I'm not saying a man is perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Nobody's but anybody who gets something done and then doesn't spend his time in the bar using county money yeah. is all right in my book. <laughs> if you use your own money, that's your own business. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Lord, boy, he's not going to get it. Get issues? <laughs> Come on, man. You got people today saying, oh, why the cops have to shoot the guy? Come on, a guy shot, shot first. What you gonna do? Yeah. Throw Pippa at him if he's shooting up. <laughs> the other guy, he launched his car at the police. Damn. Why did the cop shoot? Well, when your car becomes a deadly weapon at that point. No, I'm not saying somebody's right or wrong, but this, I mean, no, that there is always behavior that demands response. That's just two things that happened this week, you know, if you're in the mainland, somebody will be protesting against the police, for sure. You know, all I know is, hey, if we all love God and we love our neighbors, we love ourselves, none of these things will happen. Amen. 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 Because why would you be at Walmart or McDonald's late at night anyway? Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, the two most frequented places after 9 o'clock at night. Exactly. <laughs> am I right or am I wrong? And the only other places they get trouble is bars. That's right. Bars, Walmart, McDonald's. <laughs> oh, Where do you hear all the trouble happening after 9, 10 o'clock at night? One of those three places. You didn't hear nothing happening in the city. Or no, no, in the city. <laughs> Why? Because the food costs too much. <laughs> You're not going to make trouble and expensive. <laughs> you don't ever hear of a shooting at Roots Chris. Am I right? <laughs> Why? Because it costs too much. You're trying to get in and get out as fast as you can. You mean like, oh, $15. $15 for a steak. I gotta go home and think about this. You're not thinking about shooting somebody. Okay. Gotta get that money. <laughs> <laughs> it's all where you go, amen. Oh, right. amen. Everybody cool? <laughs> With yeah. my analogy. Even Target did some sense. They closed down a lot. Nationwide. You know how I know? Because how many hotels have stayed out of me? Like, I go, oh my God, I can't feel like something's coming on. I need night girl, day girl. Target is right next door. Fuck us, bro. <laughs> now I've got to go look for a Walmart. And it's always in the cheapest part of the city. We get all kinds of. You walk in there, you walk in there, and your mouth is open more than your eyes. <laughs> you cannot believe the kind of people. If you don't believe me, just go online and look at the people of Walmart. Just look at their website. 
You like freak out? We got some like something that I'm trying to dress on. Right? All right, at this new church, I advise you guys to dress nice on. Because I'm going to pick you up on. <laughs> you have to dish Yeah, you're going to have to dress nice. And you're going to bring a snuggie. Oh, like it, You're going to bring your grandma's Afghan or so you guys get that? That's the Old Testament migrated into the New Testament. And he was, Isaiah the prophet was pre-predicting and prophesying what was going to happen. And this is the church, this is the Roman church he's talking about. The Romans, um, you guys know, they carried out the crucifixion of Jesus based on religion. Right? So God loves everybody equal. God has no favorites anymore. Amen. How I mean, you know that you can be God's favorite right now if you choose? Ephesians 4, let's take a look at this. Ephesians 4, verse 18. It'll come up. Hang on, man. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I heard that. Here's another thing that self-induced nonsense does for you. Okay, read that. This I say, therefore, I testify in verse 17, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. Of their mind. So if there's anything wrong with the Gentile church, which is lost, and they're not Jewish, it makes you Gentile. Yes. This is what's wrong, is they walk in the futility of their mind. You know what it's trying to tell you? Stop thinking so much. Yes. Amen. Amen. The detriment to your life and ministry and whatever you call your success or prosperity is done here in the futility of your mind. Because if you think about it, you ain't doing it. Amen. Amen. Futility, right? Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the. Because of, their life. because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Ignorance. Here's what's happening in the church. People come to the church looking at the pastor as the, the greatest thing in the world. And I am. But. That just makes us not attentive to our little toes' needs. <laughs> or your big toe in yeah. some cases. What? <laughs> <laughs> Ignorance is usually us and our attempts at not paying attention. True that. Well, you know that if you take this word and this Bible and you, and you pay attention to it, you can get way more than anybody else can get. Uh, I'm not, you know, there's big churches out there, and I told you before, I go on Christian TV and I watch them and I listen, and I'm like, whoops, whoops, because I hear the hooping and the hollering and the, you know, here's the thing, if they get excited about something, it's usually about something they don't have, but the preacher said they can have. True. But the opposite is true, they already have it, they just don't know they have it because yeah. it is running with a traditional state. We're gonna slay the devil. He's already slain. We're gonna get the <laughs> devil. And the devil's gonna return everything he stole. Kinda hard for somebody who was crucified next to Jesus to take all the stuff in the world when he's hanging on the cross. Amen. Okay, think about it. What hands were free? Not <laughs> no, I'm a common sense preacher. Amen. I know that's the devil because of what he says to Jesus. Right? Yeah. Always a supposition. If you be, oh yeah, he's hanging over there. Oh, oh, you know that he's asking for forgiveness and it ain't happening because all of them were gonna pay. Everything was paid on the crosses, not just the cross. Because even that enemy had to pay. Adam had to pay. Amen. But Adam got forgiven because he realized his savior was right next right to him. Next to him. Uh, hallelujah. Does that make us the smartest Christians in the world? No, we just understand a little better. So that gives us wisdom. Amen. The word wisdom has the word wise in it. How many of you are wise? Wise guy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> most of you are. You know why? When I'm preaching, I see your head like. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. All right. God is good. Amen. Amen. 
Don't be alienated from the life of God because the word kingdom is God's way of doing things. It's yes. God's lifestyle stamped on your life. Amen. Right. So alienated from God means you're doing your own thing. Not God. When you're doing your own thing, God loves you. You're forgiven, but here's the thing. Your destination, your mark is off at the end. And then you reach the end of that and you wonder, God, how come? Why would you ask God how come? Go back to the beginning when you first had to make the decision. You probably 99% of the time did not consult God for the answer before you began the journey. True that. So you don't ask God in the beginning at the impact point, And then you wonder at the end, how come you're off the mark? Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, I've asked God sometimes and he's given me clear direction to do something. And at the end, I thought I missed the mark. But that's the way he intended it all along. Because anytime I look at something and I say, wow, it looks like I failed. And I turn around, I see all the people who weren't in it with me. That's right. That's right. And that's the Lord's way of showing me who's in and who's not. Amen. It's not that God hates them or anything, but they fall off the wagon somehow along the journey. Yeah. yeah? In fact, when Moses was headed down, okay, you guys remember he brought them out of Egypt. Yeah. Headed into the promised land. I mean, you know, three million of them, they say, three million exodus out, three million slaves. Here's the thing, they brought the mentality of a slave with, with them. them. And at the end, only a handful of them made it into the promised land. Because they kept marching around this mountain, doing laps. I mean, you know that when you don't do what you're supposed to do for your coach, they make you run laps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Matters. Matters. So they had to... <laughs> Go around this mountain, yeah, a 14 mile journey. They say it took 40 years. How does that happen? You know, we can walk from here to Hakalao unless we keep going around Mount Kea. You know what I mean? I don't know what would be 14 miles out this way, but um, I know law maybe, yeah. But no, we keep taking laps around Mount Kea. Hallelujah. That's a long way. Why? Because they wouldn't change their heart. God just wanted them to just stop bitching and moaning. That's not a bad word, guys. That's all they were good at because all they were bitching and moaning about was their lack of a destination. The lack of a destination was because they wouldn't fall into being royalty, child, or children of the Most High God, who's their king. They would not shake off the slavery. They even got to the point where they made Moses man. Because you remember yes. Moses got man? And God said, stretch your hand out to the rock. But he whacked the rock with his staff. He wasn't supposed, he wasn't supposed to do that. And therefore, even Moses didn't get to enter the promise. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. So how many know that anger will stop you from your destination Everything. too? How many of you in here are a snapper? And I don't mean a red snapper. Or a -a -a -a. Let me tell you something. You are delaying your destination of prosperity. That's right. It's a big mountain. Right. Okay, let me ask again. How many snappers in the house? Snapper turtle. Snap case. High five in it and say, never no more. I'm going to stop that. Never no more. I'm going to stop that. Because you're delaying your destination. Right. And you know what the destination is, right? You can't be a snap case and a preacher. You can't be a snap case and a healing evangelist. You can't be a snap case and a prophet. You can't be a snap case and a teacher of the word. Because what are you going to teach? How to be a snap case? A lot of people will piss you off. You can't do it. I know it. You know how I know? Because I was a snappy person. Amen. I was snappy. Yeah. I had a... My dad was an alcoholic. A raging alcoholic. You know what that left me susceptible to? Being a raging alcoholic with a bad temper working in the prison. Amen. Yeah. So I had to change. I mean, if I have to change, let me tell you something. You better change too. Yeah. I met this guy not very long ago. And he's like, yeah, bro, how are you? And his face was hanging. And I remember I was the cause of that. His face hanging? His face hanging. And not sad. It hit a nerve in his head. And it killed the nerve and his whole face is sagging now. I mean, I felt so bad. I said, Lord, can I pray for him and fix that? The Lord said, too late. <laughs> oh my God. 
But the guy, he found out that I'm serving the Lord, he's serving the Lord, he forgave me. He said, no, brother, I, you hit me for good reason. I said, there is no good reason for hitting anyone. And he said, no, 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 bro, don't need to worry about it. Jesus get all the glory. I felt so bad. Oh, my God. <laughs> he gives it to Jesus. Uh, no, he gave it all to Jesus, and I, was, I gave him all the leakings. Anyway, <laughs> you feel bad about these things, you know? It's like... Now I feel bad at the time. I was like, yeah, good for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So sometimes I, I, get, I get this headache really. Uh, oh, no. And I'm thinking, oh, no, no, no. I'm paying for that. <laughs> Even before trying to have a raging headache. Even right now, it's still like, no. Oh. The thing is, hey, I don't make excuses. Nope. I have a job to do. I mean, you know, I signed up for this, so I got to come do yeah. this. And I gotta do a good job. I can be a real snap case to the end, right? Oh, maybe. But I still come. I don't. Man. I remember my first pastor. If he even felt like he never, he didn't want to be there that night, he would just give it to one of the So yeah, take it. I'm not coming tonight. I'm in a bad mood. Wow. I'm like, what? That means that every service I'll miss because I'm in a bad mood every day. <laughs> I try not to show it to anybody, but you know, some people that are close, they know that I have bad days too. I have bad days and worse days. Worse days. Amen. But I still gotta show up, you know, today. I I really didn't want to do ministry, I'll just be honest with you. And then the first text came in this morning and then this and then other texts and I had to go and meet these people and I'm like, I'm not even feeling it today. I just you know, people are texting yeah. me. My text wants to say, where the hell have you been? I haven't seen you in months. <laughs> Honestly saying. But I got a text back. Miss you too. Two. Yes. Walk in love. <laughs> Here's the thing, yeah. The first person I went and I met up with, he said, oh my God, thank you so much. Without you, oh my God, bro. I got healed right off the bat. Healed. So my bad mood was like, bah. <laughs> went to the next person and like, oh my god, thank you for coming you know, I didn't think you would answer my text I'm like, yeah, neither did I but I did it <laughs> hallelujah like, oh, boom, heal too like, ah, alright I had to be at the church of the air about 12.15 and to meet a you know, pretty well known guy in Hilo and he's like, oh my god you was three minutes late. I thought you wasn't coming. <laughs> All right, guys. Pray for him. He feels better. Like, oh, my God. I feel different. Pray the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Still, it's that kind of day. You know? It's just you have those days. Yes. You got to shake it off. Because I'm not here for me. If I was here for me, I'd stay home in the bed with a blanket over my head. <laughs> <laughs> and here's what I made for a total of six people I prayed for today. I made a total sum of zero dollars. Yeah, because some people just don't have. So those of you that do give, you make up for those. So the sum total of this week, I have $43. And one of you in here gave me $40. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm sorry. And then, again, if I was in it for the money, I'd be at home under the blanket, probably drinking a bottle of vodka or something to benefit myself. Right? Vodka and Benadryl or something, you know what I mean? But, again, some days you don't have it, but here's what you do have. You have a gift from God. You have a desire to serve God. In spite of all your emotional baggage and PS, you still make it a point to say, you know what, they need you, God, so I will go. Just think about it. They give me God all the glory and I'm just there standing there. <laughs> the vessel. The God still uses that rotten disposition. <laughs> I just smile. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> what else can you do? You just got to still show up. Amen. Yeah. So six people today, six people got here. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I'll say five and three phones got here. Anyway. <laughs> 
some people like to hang on to their stuff because that brings them attention that they don't have. Brings them attention. Some people love attention. None of you though, you guys are not attention for. Okay, you all good. That's what it is. The spirit of whoredoms is alive and well. You think I'm swearing, go look it up. It's the spirit of whoredoms. Whoredoms is your emphasis on self. That's where the attention deficit disorder really is when you pray with attention. If you really have a need, text me, call me, I'll be there. Then, I'll be there. <laughs> it's fine with how I feel about you. <laughs> it's my attempt at singing crazy. <laughs> you gotta really love people to be in ministry. That's true. Yeah, otherwise, you hate it for the wrong reason. If you're in it for attention, remember wrong something. Reason. They're going to give God all the glory. That's right, not you. You're not even part of it. They say, what the guy's name? I don't know his name. But yeah, God, name. <laughs> That's right. That's what it is. <laughs> all right. Isaiah 53. Let's look at this one now. Verse 6. Now, this is an Old Testament scripture again. So I can do nonsense. We're all just going to be smarter about life. Amen. All right. Blah, 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 blah. How many of you enjoy what you hear here? I'm giving you straight up advice on ministry. I remember something, everything I talk about is about your ministry, not mine. That's right. Mine is the example. Yours is what you do with it. Amen? Because yeah. you all are gifted in some way. You don't believe me? Well, one of these Wednesdays we'll show you all of the gifts, and I'm working on a teaching like that, about all the gifts of the Spirit that you can get. First things first, some of you love Jesus. Amen? So you're saved. What you gonna do? You gotta, the next step for you is getting water baptized. Right? And that, all that is, is you dump yourself under the water. It's like a grave, a watery grave. You go on and you die to yourself. You come back up. New brand new. Same flesh. Same mind. But you, it's symbolic that you have raised yourself from the dead. Because if I keep you under the water, oh, wow. you will surely die. <laughs> and it's so it's symbolic. That's why water baptism, you die. As a symbol, you on the water, you come back up because I cannot, despite my best efforts, put you in a coffin, throw the dirt on you, and bring you back up after. <laughs> so water is the symbolism. You we'll dunk you on the water, bring you up, and you're like, yay, I am water baptized. <laughs> the next step is being baptized in the spirit, baptized in fire, like in Acts 2. Alright, being baptized. Some people get baptized in the Holy Spirit before they get water baptized, which is fine. God's not going to say, oh, no, 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 let's keep the procedure. Here's a flag. Nah. Not That's not a matter. You can get baptized in the Holy Spirit. In fact, that is more real than being water baptized. Yeah. Well, you know, just take care of that. And baptized, being baptized in fire means that the evidence of that baptism is you speak with other tongues. You're able to pray in a language that the devil can understand. The demons cannot steal your prayer request because you're praying in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit you don't know, it's using your vocal cords to pray things you don't understand. So it's a mishmash of every language in the world that has ever existed all in one form. So I pray in that as much as possible. I try and do it at least an hour a day if I can. While I'm driving or whatever. I just pray in the Holy Ghost because it gets my brain off of other things. Like the rack of rack, rack of rack, woe is me, I hate people, but I gotta do this. It's not some far-fetched thing that your mind is making up because your mind has nothing to do with it. Because if I do baptism in the Holy Spirit, how many of you would need that? How many of you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? We can do that tonight if you want. You know, and you just pray and then you quiet time, you just you're gonna pray and your tongue is just gonna go and you're gonna begin to see all the things that you're praying. So we like that's magic. No, it's not. It's spiritual magic. <laughs> It's just spiritual. spiritual. Many of you need that because when I'll tell you what happened to me. Was, as soon as I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden I used to feel fire go through my arms. I used to feel fire through my legs. And then I would see people and I would know that healing was for them and I would pray for them. That's how all of this started was my obedience to being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And praying in tongues a lot. Amen. I'm not forcing nobody to do nothing. You know, I never force you for be here. I never go to your house with my knife. 
right. Here's a famous scripture. In fact, it's talking about Jesus through the whole thing, Isaiah 53. It's talking about Jesus and all the things that were going to happen to him. That's right. And even in verse 5, the last line, and by his stripes we are healed. Are healed. Amen. So his stripes means all the wounds he took on his back yes. before our healing. Amen. Then he goes into verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. Right. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Okay, so the Lord has laid all of our iniquity, and iniquity is just another word for sin. Yes. Laid the sin on Jesus. How you know that for you to talk about sin is self-induced nonsense of his own? Right? Because right. did Jesus pay for it all? Did he yes. wash away all the sin? Yes, he did. did he take it all away? Yes. Then we shouldn't even be talking about sin. It doesn't Amen. exist. This is my Portuguese friend. He said, all we like sheep have gone astray. There's a holy lady driving around town. She's kind of wacko, crackers, lose them. She has an ashtray on her desk for her. Why do you she has an ashtray? I thought we banned ashtrays. <laughs> I don't know. I saw this and I was like, holy Christmas. Look at this. <laughs> she is all about the environment. Amen. She's not going to flick her cigarettes outside. She's got an ashtray right around right there. I was thinking, what a conscious person of being green. <laughs> anyway, smoking green. Smoking. Yeah. <laughs> the cars are coming actually. No, we don't flick them yeah. in your box. Yeah, You'll clog up your USB port. That's right. <laughs> I just thought that that was kind of strange. It was it's a Honda Accord. I was like, all of these Honda people, there's something wrong. I'd be on Nissan. Anyway. <laughs> Lose them. Why are you just calling them? Oh. Lose them. Anyway, we make the sound of lose them. There's some people out there, though, huh? They are. Amen. Yeah, no good. So, what do you think this one is? All we, like sheep, have gone astray. Astray. We have turned everyone to his. Look at all this right there. Can you see that? We have turned everyone to. So what is the real nonsense in the scripture then? Excuse me. Some of you already turned the answer out in your head, but you shameful say about lot in case you're wrong. <laughs> it's this, going your own way. Like Fleetwood Mac song. You cannot go your own way. Eight dollars a music fan. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> you cannot do things your own way. That's you being God. I mean that God wants you to have a say in everything, but he would like to participate in that. By giving you proper direction. Amen. Okay? Because everything is about impact and destination. So if you want to be at the right destination, you better consult the person that is at the point of impact and all that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. I get people all the time come to me and like, Pastor, I think I found Mr. Wright. For you, that's your business. Who you end up with is your business. Amen. Then, oh, I, I think I follow. I sold a seed and I follow. I said, well, hopefully <laughs> that your seed sowing had patience involved with it because sometimes people sow on Sunday and try and reap their own on Monday. I don't know. The fastest growing seeds I ever saw was chia pears. That, even that takes a little while. These people that pass out so much seed on Sunday, he misses the right show up on Monday. Oh, yeah. And then I asked him, is he missed the right off the mark? <laughs> right of Santa or what? But they're like, no, no, no. And then after a while, you see. When you rush into anything, it's not good. Nothing good ever happens when you rush things. Amen. How are you going to make stew in five minutes? <laughs> the meat is going to be tough. Even on pressure cooker, take 45 minutes. 45 minutes, yeah. At least. At least. How are you going to make poi? Just smash it. Okay. Oh, take yeah. time. And not everybody's hand can be in the poi. No, it's our hands. Okay. 
Some people don't wash food. You know, Hawaiians had a theory, right? And here's a life lesson for many of you. You guys know that lomi salmon is not an ancient Hawaiian food, right? You don't see the salmon swimming upstream of Wailuku, right? I say this from time to time because people are like, what? These were all the Hawaiians went to the Pacific Northwest and went to work. Never even have tomatoes on the hokulea. Never have onions either. Never have. And sure never have ice cubes. Never have ice cubes. <laughs> you remember in fourth grade public school you had to learn Hawaiian, huh? Yes. So the, everybody say, oh we want to make a luau this couple of times. We want to make a luau for our fourth grade project. So everybody's doing that. And then I was researching because my job was low me salmon. Okay, you had to do a report of what you made. So I did the report and I found out before the days of Google. <laughs> you really had to go dig in the books to find out. And I found out that there were like Hawaiians that went to the Pacific Northwest to go and learn how to fish and they migrated up. And the fish of choice was in Manini was salmon. Ah, and where is salmon found, boys and girls? In cold climates, right? Very cold. They gotta swim upstream. And you, you ever saw one grizzly bear by boiling pot? Only the Hawaiian. Only the Hawaiian. Because I confirmed this with a Hawaiian kupuna. This person told me, no be low, low, eh? Because she was telling the story, she was an elderly woman, and she was saying, you know, my grandpa guys, they all went Pacific Northwest, and that was the fish, and they like eat raw fish, yeah. but the salmon, no more flavor went raw. Yeah. So they had to put onions that they found, and green onion, yeah, and she, tomato, all of the things in Lomi Salmon that not found in Hawaii. <laughs> When I did my report, everybody got angry. They said, no, we eat that at every Hawaiian party. That's Hawaiian food. <laughs> so this Kupuna lady told me, this Tutu told me, tell them, no be low. What <laughs> that stupid Rebecca <laughs> Maki made <me> time. <laughs> no more salmon Hawaii. No more tomatoes Hawaii. No more even green onion Hawaii. No let alone white onion Maui not even from Maui. <laughs> so the next time you're eating lomi, lomi is just a description of how they mix. Okay, so how many of you learned something today? <laughs> no more salmon in Wailuku River. Because if you get salmon, we'll have grizzly bills. <laughs> if you see a grizzly bill, why you look good? just on pouring it with a tan. <laughs> you have plenty hair on his back. <laughs> oh, that's his sister. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I learned that in fourth grade. <laughs> you know, I even stopped my uncles and aunties and I thought, you know, Lomi Zambia is not from Hawaii. Like, what? No. That is not it. I like meet the Hawaiian that was towing the salmon from Polynesia all the way to Hawaii. Anyway, no more. The salmon is a cold water fish. Very mm -hmm. cold water fish. <laughs> <laughs> See, you learn things when you pay attention. So now you can all go stomp your friends. I get small for put it in. Maybe they found green onion and onion up on a kale, but it's getting ice and the salmon will swim up there. <laughs> in the lake. Okay. Just some trivia for you. Uh, some of you are very entertained by so that. Funny. Remember where I grew up? Not a You're supposed to be more smart than me. Yeah. Alright, Astrid. Okay. 
there's a little stubbornness. You know what stubbornness is? That's for being hard headed, right? Yeah. Huh? Huh? That's stubborn. How long are you going to be stubborn and not be blessed and then keep yeah. sowing seeds to be blessed but you're a jackass? That's right. Amen. It's not good to be a jackass and try to be successful. It does not work. This one is Romans 3, verse 13 and 14, right? So, I want you all to be the most informed people so we all learn about the Holy Spirit today. Yep, 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 yep. All right. 13 and 14. Okay, right here. Their throat is an open tomb. Yeah. With their tongues, they have practiced deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. His mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. You know what a mask is? A snake. It's a snake. Okay. So something like, what is one ash? <laughs> Not a jackass. <laughs> so this has happened before in this church. That's the church you swear, what one ash is? <laughs> if my eyebrows go up and you ask the question, well, you're, you're probably really describing this stuff. Anyway, all right. <laughs> All it is is crooked speech. You see it on your notes, right? Crooked yeah. speech. You know, people whose mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. You, you meet people like that in the Christian world, like ah, you know, I don't believe the kind of that. Uh, how many of you have witnessed miracles in this church, even in your own life? Then there's no bitterness in you. Because you know? you've no. seen the hand of God moving in your own life. For right? no, well, some of you, God got to move many times <laughs> to get you where you need to go. Amen. Despite your best efforts to fail, God is still prospering you. Always. All right. How many of you are more successful now than you've ever been? Everybody's hand better go up because at least you got Jesus over you. Remember, in the end, or like the famous say, at the end of the day, it's all about Jesus. That's all I'm here for is to witness to the power of God. Amen. The power of Jesus. The Holy Spirit, I love it when He mind your history of life because I see things happen for you. Amen. Amen. I know some people in our ministry, despite their best efforts not to work, God keep giving them jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how come you laughing the most? You be in your house a lot? Yeah. You don't want to work, but you got to work. I used to think when I was at work about not working. <laughs> my greatest hobby at work was thinking, how can I not work with this go. job that I hate? And and I'm so my job easier. <laughs> God gave me the perfect job. Ministry. You know what? Because I don't know what would happen. You know what I went to paramedic school? This is what shocked me. Was that I was a student, so my job was to sit in the back of the radio and not know what's going on on the radio. They just say, hey, we have a call, let's go. And I'd be like, Jump in the back of the ring and we're going. And I don't know what's gonna happen when I get there. I start sweating. Right? There you go. And oh my God, what are we gonna see? And sometimes I would get very shocked at seeing yeah. somebody's premium rolling around on the highway. Yikes. And they tell me, hey, you're a student, pick it up. Yikes. And then I pick them up and get yelled at by the cops to leave it alone. Tricks. Yeah, never listen to play jokes. That's the way it goes, right? So, hallelujah. I used to think to myself, how can I do this and parlay this into a career forever? <laughs> and something came to me. You're just here temporarily yeah, to right. learn something along the journey. Yeah. And now, you know what all of those things taught me? Was to value human life. That's right. Amen, because life is short. I mean, you can remember 40 years ago. Oh, you old. Bye. <laughs> God is blessing you. <laughs> And then he's making you young again. Amen. You know that laughter is the best medicine. So you come to this church. My job, boys and girls, is to make you laugh. Yeah. While teaching you the word. Because if laughter is the best medicine, if I'm not making you laugh, I'm making you sing. <laughs> because some of you in here, you need to boss laugh. That's right. You know what? Boss laugh. You know this boss laugh. It's not the one that's talking about boss laugh. <laughs> Some of you need to laugh because you're too uptight. You take yourself too serious. That's your right. life is too serious. Amen. Amen. So if I can make you laugh, then I'm keeping you healthy because Amen. I'm just giving you medicine. 
You didn't go to a church where you didn't laugh the whole time? Yeah, I've been there. I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> you felt more sick when you left. <laughs> and I think, you know, you know what I find? Because I was in churches like that. There's no funny business in there. I think about religion and the law and death and hell and the devil. And you leave there and it was like, what a great service. And I'm thinking to myself, what the heck is that? Is this what a mental hospital? I think that was great. I don't think that was great. That was irritating. So I try and make it an enlightening, humorous kind of experience. For you. If you don't laugh, then go home, take a plunger, put them on your face, and pump ten times. <laughs> you gotta get something out of your head. Everybody is clogged up. You gotta unclog that head of yours. You get too much seriousness oh going God, on. So you know what is funny? And teenagers, they come in here, they laugh, laugh, and then sometimes when everybody laughing, they're all serious. <laughs> and you know what goes through my mind? I know they get some boy or girl on their mind yeah. right now. They're thinking. What the? When you when you're young, that's all you think about, like. <laughs> when you get old. <laughs> Sex, drugs, and playing. <laughs> no food? Hormones. <laughs> anyway. Food was fought on the list. Oh, huh? God. You gotta survive. <laughs> oh, yeah. These kids, you know, we used to go to the food bank and pick up all the snacks for them, have youth meetings, and all the snacks. And they all, you know what the number one prayer request for kids is? Getting rid of zits. <laughs> yeah. Getting rid of zits or mending their broken hearts. And the thing is, they stuff in their face with all the snacks. I wonder why they get zits. Why they get broken hearts. <laughs> so one time I went to the food bank and they had clear oh. Cases of clear wow. So I got them all. And the guy always said, Who are you buying that? Because these kids, they got all the kind of crater face, kind of lava pizza <laughs> face kind of pasta. So I busted out the clear cell. You know what they thought? That was the greatest thing. <laughs> They always washing their face. I said, hey, what life lesson? You don't get wash your face and not wash your teeth. Because some of you is raging. You know, take care. How are you going to kiss somebody your breath and perm yeah. their hair? Yikes. <laughs> so the next time I'm going to like, mouthwash. Floss. Believe it or not, the food bag has mouthwash sometimes and they have toothbrush, tooth so we had some of the most hygienic kids you know. <laughs> so now you're preparing for success. <laughs> now I get adults in my ministry and we've been You gotta work on your game. That's mm. right. Oral hygiene is Ask Marcy, she got the scrub on for a reason. She got good in your mouth. <laughs> she like, smell your breath. Right <laughs> now. She can tell you what's going on in your mouth just by smelling it. <laughs> True <enough. laughs> you know, I catch her so does you have me pass on. <laughs> she don't even know she do that. She's not smelling my skin, she's smelling my breath, I know. So for Marcy, I'm all in. Yeah. Getting a rope. <laughs> Frontier medicine, you cannot all use pliers. <laughs> Alright, check this out. The heart, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Here's the thing before you say it, and that's what I put out there, is your heart is deceptive if not saved. You know, one thing about your friends and family, they don't know what you've experienced with God. Don't expect them to know. 
How many of you tried to evangelize your friends and family, tell them about church, how good it was, and they look at you like... They don't know what you experienced. They have no clue. They don't like I told you before, tell them no come. Different levels. So you tell them no come, they like come. That's the way the human condition is. Yeah. You tell them something, they're like the opposite. That's true. You ever told somebody, oh, this cake, no good. They're like, why? What's wow. wrong? Yeah. Let me try. Let me taste. So you know already, you tell somebody no, they like go. Amen? That's right. Tell them, don't jump off the cliff. Why? Not too far. That's right. If, I, if something happened, you rescue me and then you jump off. I had some real dumb friends like that. I told my friend one time, my bike, because my bike, I was working on my bike because I used to steal a lot of bikes. So, <laughs> <laughs> I had this bike and every so often because the fork would attach to the tire, the screw would come loose sometimes. So I told my friend, okay, hey, don't ride the bike. Okay, don't because I'll tell you what, I gotta change these first and I gotta pound this in because it's kind of crooked so it's already it's wearing wrong. So I thought, Laura, try to ride the bike until I, and I went. My dad took me and we went and we we're gonna look for some new nuts and bolts, right? With washers and he was gonna help me bend it to make it straight. I came home, my friend was on the side bleeding with all kind of bandages all over his body. I thought, what the heck happened to you? you fell in a meat grinder or what? And he said, Bum. I made your bike. I told him, What are you in the bike for? I said, What happened? He said, I'm ready. And he was crying. I showed him and listened. Too late now. I said, Wow, what happened? He said, I was going down over here. And all of a sudden, the tire came off. <laughs> and the foreman hit the, hit the curb. And I went. And I went flying on the curb. And I don't even get all scourbage. <laughs> I thought, why are you gonna just wait till I fix the bike? I always land you on my bike. <laughs> I should have been listening. And I was looking at his bandages. And it wasn't like fresh gauze. It was his bandage with scotch tape. So he couldn't find the metal. And then blood coming through the thing. And all. I had to help my friend repair himself with back teeth. Oh, yeah, back teeth was the cure of everything. You get so high. <laughs> you lay <make> so high. <laughs> <laughs> you hear people sing opera. Just shoot back teeth. I don't know. I don't know how many of you are. I'm like, you shouldn't have done that. And I'm like, you. <laughs> So not even one month later, his bike was lying in the thing and he told me, hey, try not ride my bike because <laughs> flat the tire. I said, how come? He said, I don't know, get one leak or something. And you guys know where Mr. K recycling uh -huh. is now. And that was a service station right. back in the day. So I was thinking, well, the tire flat. I'm going to help my friend out. So I rolled up, I did it right. I walked the bike all the way from Lana Kilos in down there. I put it in the tire. And I was like, okay. I can't ride, the tire was flat, I'm just gonna ride him. I rolled the bike halfway through the intersection in front of a cop. The sidewall I didn't know had a bubble in a tube and went pop, like a gunshot. And I saw a cop come out of the car, fall out with his seat on, upside down, in the middle of the intersection, trying to undo it, so I unhosted his gun. I looked at the flat tire and uh, I walked and I said, what happened, officer? <laughs> I knew what happened. The thing exploded right there. Pow, like a gunshot. You should see this guy upside down with his head, but I'm walking, but I'm moving. Oh Turn on and latch the seat down. I'm like, did I do that? <laughs> and he's like, you heard that, boy, you heard that. And where did the gunshot came from? Where did the gunshot came from? Because he called my eyes right there, and at that time it was pretty notorious. So, oh, yes. And he's like, You, yeah, I think it's in our apartment, too. He went inside and called for backup, and I saw all these cops coming down. And like, walking my bike back up the hill, it was my friend's bike that he told me not to ride. Oops. Then I threw the bike in my friend's yard. Then he came home, and he said, Oh, he just bought a pump for his bike. And I'm over there, How come? You
and it's bumping and bumping and what is it? Oh, maybe the two went wrong. <laughs> he said, then he took off the tiny look. Wow, all shredded in there. Oh, bro, how you know? God talked to you. <laughs> really, God was talking to me a long time, bro. <laughs> Then he had to go back to the bike shop for the one to me. And then he came back and helped him fix it. I mean, I'm tired of You know what? I pop him up for you. I told him, more fast if you go down the line, and I'm saying, he said, man, right here. So then he had to turn sweating, and then we were all riding bikes after that. And then, the moral of the story is people will do the opposite of what you tell them to do. Perfect example. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's no one. Right? Yes. I remember before we used to play baseball in Lanakila Park. They had a backstop, so if you hit it that way, you would hit the house with our houses in the direct line on left field. So my dad always said, turn the other way, come over here, and hit it down towards the basketball court. So sometimes we put them over the building into the barbed wire fence. Yeah. One time we sent this fat girl. She said, I'm going to get out. <laughs> As Barbara all on the top, but there's one part of the fence is a little bit higher, and she said, I get them. She said, Oh, we said, not supposed to, just leave them one of our skin. She said, No, I got them, I got them, I got them. So she went, she came back, and her shirt was missing. Oh. And she was holding her big fan booty like this. She said, What do you efforts better call it? Get the ball and take my shirt off the fence. I was like, what happened? Had the opening, she goes, Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> we went, she had climbed up, but her shirt got stuck on the other side. Oh. And she didn't want to let go of her booty and reach on the to get her shirt. Oh my God. <laughs> she just came all the way to the park to yell and swear at all of us to go and get the ball and her shirt. <laughs> and she kept trying kicks at us. Go, hurry up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we went. And all of us young boys were, Shirt on, you guys all gonna get cracks. <laughs> and my friend's like, Oh, you teachers on your back too. You <laughs> oh boy, he got dirty. <laughs> <laughs> dirty. <laughs> and I was like, We gotta get so beat up in my whole life. I have to run fast because she's coming after me too. We went to running on the bulls in Pamplona. And sure enough, she tried to get out of it, but her shirt was too. <laughs> Too close to the bottom of the bubble. So Not the whole thing in the bubble. Wow, just a chain link grabbed her shirt and pulled it right off. Right? <laughs> she should have stopped. Oh, she was whipping the ball at everybody. This is even crazy stuff happening in my life. Anyway, that's for you and enjoyment today. I, mean, I won't say her name because she's a real life breathing person okay. who's okay. a yeah. raging lesbian now. She will still she kill me right now. <laughs> When we were growing up, we were like 12 years old. She, to us, she looked like she was 6'10". <laughs> Virus ran into her at the doctor's office now. Uh, she goes, hey, take my teeth, walk! Oh, 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 I heard the voice, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> and I turned around, and she's like 5'6". So I'm like, oh, it's just you, lucky little girl. <laughs> she goes, what you doing now? People that's from your past, it's and you know, like, sometimes you're like, it's mm-hmm. <laughs> she's still working the mullet from 10, oh. 10 years old. She had a mullet from 10, 10 wow. years old, and just rocking Billy Ray Cyrus before he was Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> oh, like, that's gifted. <laughs> stupid, the Billy Ray, <laughs> that's gifted. She shook my hand like a man. Okay, bro, I'll see you after. Six, but she's still shaking up. Oh, man, oh, broke my wings as a doctor. <laughs> hey, man, some people still it. I remember this guy. Okay, I think it's like, you guys like these stories. I know. Yeah. I've told the story before, but this guy, his name was Scotty. He was on punk, 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 punk. He was playing punk rock before punk rock was gold. 
he was a real punk. He used to like bullying us, taking our money, taking all our stuff. And we all went to Spencer Park camping one time. And he was acting up, acting punky with us. He thought I would like his girlfriend. He was acting up. And my friend brought this bottle of Nan. Oh, no. And he's like, yeah, this thing don't really work. I don't know. But we put him on Scotty's eyebrows and he was sleeping. Because he sleep hard. Oh, no. okay? Hawaiian Cody sleeping in the <laughs> Stories and trying to sleep at the same time. Oh, Lord. Oh, no. We put the nail on his eyebrow. And we never think not to him. We were like, ah, the thing not working. We did flashlights because he's sleeping hard. We were shining the light. Yeah, this thing not even work. So we went to sleep. Woke up the next day and thinking nothing. So you remember the whole day, no more mirrors spent so far. Because everybody broke the mirrors of Steve. I don't know what people do with nothing. It was jail kind of mirror. Well, he went to the, he washed his face, and we're all eat, eating breakfast, and he came, and all of us are like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. That's the only word you can say, whoa. <laughs> it was like patchy, you know, almost all the way down, but it was like little, funky little patches. Down there. And the summer fun leaders were in shock because they knew somebody did it, but they didn't want to say nothing. They were just looking at each other like, oh my god, this was OMG before OMG was spelled by initials. And they were looking at us like, what you just do? What you just And we're all looking and everybody's in shock because he's a punchy, punchy, weird guy. In fact, he's probably still in prison right now. Anyway. And I was also like, trying our best throughout the day not to say anything, not to look at him, not to laugh. How can you laugh? We were there for seven days. Oh my god, that wasn't the first day. You don't know, that was the first night. <laughs> we had to go like a whole week without saying one thing. Oh my god. And this is what, the true story, okay? So we get back to Hilo and we all go home and everyone's like, go, 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 go. And then he came to my house. Uh -oh. And he's like, eh, Who did it? Huh? You did it to me. Huh? And my father came to the door and said, What the hell happened to you? <laughs> you look like you got in a you know, fight with the road and the road one. <laughs> and he's like, Oh, Mr. So Wah, I just was checking if he did this to me. And my, my dad told him, Get the hell out of here. My kids don't do stupid stuff now. One credit to my father that I had. <laughs> then after he's like, what you do to the kid? <laughs> I said, no, someone told him about Nair and told him, yeah, we put him on his eyebrows because he's a punk. And when my dad said, good, he deserved that. You do something stupid, guess what? You go match him. Oh my God. I'm going to put him on nose. <laughs> this guy was going all around asking Nair and nobody would spill. Finally, he had to just shave off the rest. He was looking like a leper. Anyway, <laughs> he shaved them all off, so he looked surprised the whole week. <laughs> True story. Anyway, and my mother, my mother, because I asked my mom, I said, what does Nanny do? She goes, you want to find out? No. no. It removes hair. It's a debilitator. It takes away hair. I was like, you need to take them all and that's how it all started. Because I suggested that. So watch what you suggest. So come to pass. The enemy will present that opportunity to you. What if I cheat on my text? I'm going to have it. And then they have it. I cheat on my text. And then audit. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, watch when you play with me here. Especially if you're a boy. That is good. It'll work if you leave it on long enough. Mm -hmm. So I never did find out who was. And then one time, I was working at the jail, and he came in, and now I'm 6'2", and I'm like 250 pounds, I was powerlifting, I was really big, and he came in, and he's still 5'4", <laughs> and he was 5'4", I was 4'4", you know what I mean? Yeah. And he came in, he said, act a punk, I'm talking about, what do you mean? Like, what, what, what? I'm not a boy anymore, I will make a pretzel out of you. We're on the opposite end. <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes they just never change. They never 
changed and how long you have you changed? Yeah. Have you changed today? Because I know who you are yesterday. <laughs> Hope you changed for today. Yeah. Uh, so again, who can know? Right? The heart of you know, when I was a kid, I was I was smart because I read a lot, but I think uh, I was deceptively evil. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I used to like to try different things, you know, try to, I would read up on things and think, oh, I should do this, you know. We used to make bombs after New Year's, you remember New Year's Day, you take all the un unpop duck brand and you take all the purple off and you make bombs. Thank God, none of them blew up in our face, you know, because we were packing them. I think it could have gone off at any time. I remember making bombs out of big fountains and just blow them and nothing left. We couldn't find one piece of like, Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> we can go to Iran. <laughs> uh, I wasn't even thinking. I was like, wow. Make one more. We would blow the cover, the manhole covers off the, oh the guard. That's you know? Boom. And they made it again. Uh, you know those things are like 80, Every. 90, 100 pounds. <laughs> and we all laughing. <laughs> Little girls riding their white cars, a thing like, <laughs> and we laughing, <laughs> stupid, <laughs> and they pedal away and show your finger. <laughs> Aren't you seven? <laughs> that was the old days, running to the housing. All right, you guys like that? Okay, first Corinthians. <laughs> All right, verse fourteen. Here's another thing. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually just. That's why it's nonsense, right? You can't tell anybody about spiritual things if they don't know the Spirit. No, they don't know God. How are you going to tell them? All you can do again is tell them, yeah, at this place, they're pacified. It's not a mental, you know, these stories. You can't tell right. those things. Yeah. Some people say our church is more like a comedy club. I don't know, there's some comedy here, I don't know. <laughs> but you guys learn, right? Yeah, learn something, yeah. right? So again, you know, the last one is a deceptive part. This one is a lacking intellect to change. You know God, are you changing? Yeah. Okay. Here's how people change. They change based on you changing. True. They follow God as you follow God. Because yeah. people always observe other people. That's right. If you're walking around like you're mad at the whole world, they never follow you. Yes. But if you're happy and laughing all the time, they want to be around you. They want to hang out with you. Some of you guys throw plenty of parties. You know how I know? I'm not invited. But I hear about it on Facebook or Instagram. Wow. I see pictures of all your food and like, yeah. I don't, I don't like that. Because remember, you invite me to yours and I go, somebody find out that I never go to the other. Oh, all mad because I never go. So I don't even post pictures about where I go, what I eat, because all of you like, yeah. Rejection. So Rejection. I'm looking out for everybody. Peelings. That's right. I'm watching your peelings. Because it's, unfortunately, that's how it is. If I pick one, I gotta pick all. And I cannot be everybody's at the same time. So somebody can first like it. That's right. I read this a long time ago. I got invited to like five parties. I went to four, the fifth one I ran out of time. When I went there, the lights was all off. Oh. I said, oh well. I think I was all mad. They shut the pond down because I never come. Wow. And they didn't like me. I said, I came, the lights was off. They go, yeah, right. Rejection. <laughs> Next time, I'm going to gonna bang my car into your porch. <laughs> People like that, they get so rejected. Oh, yeah, yeah. Calm down, man. Relax. Well, if you're inviting me to a restaurant, wow. Well, there you go. Cool. Cool. <laughs> I'm trying, but well, you know, nowadays I just go home and watch sports at a movie. I'm still a drama. Because one time people invited me to a party and they never think I was coming. They busted out lines and weed and alcohol and everything. And then I showed up and I was like, yeah. And they're like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> how are you going to hide white powder on your nose? I cannot. Are you sniffing already? You sniffing already? That's so hard. So when I look 
at that and I just say, oh, oh, you guys, you have a share. <laughs> hey, why not? <laughs> no, but you never share anyway, because I can sell them and make money instead of collecting off them. It's like, give me a stash guy right now. Nonsense if you understand what it is. It's just us and our fuel attempt at trying to be holy. It ain't happening. Either you are holy in your heart or you're not. You're holy in your head. Something like that. Alright, y'all happy? Yeah, I'm sure.